Okay, my name is Triple N I and here's another one. Uh, this time it's in a proper Soviet box. Or so I was told. There's a lot of plastic on it, which is annoying, but inevitable. I really need a good blade and I know exactly where to get some. I'm probably gonna get them today. Ah. So I hate doing this twice as a folder, I think, but I am not using it twice. So I was told that whatever is inside this thing, I could play Tetris on it, which is a big clue. There's tape on every single side. It's annoying, really annoying. Uh, okay, that, uh, that came off along with some of the paint on the box. As long as I can manage to cut off the edges of the tape, I should be able to pry this thing open. Is it still in frame? Yes. Right, so. Hmm. Uh, this is the hinge, I was wrong. This is where it opens up. Maybe it doesn't look like it's moving. I see some movement. Crazy amount of tape. There we go. Bubble wrap, even more bubble wrap. And we have our first item of the day a nice unity three and a half digit multimeter which is supposed to still work uh, and a bunch of cheapish probes but i don't care uh, yep hmm. working condition continuity uh, let's see Uh -huh. Nice, so it works. And then there's this, which is a polypropylene film capacitor kit. That's really nice. Polypropylene capacitors are supposed to be good. Or was it polystyrene? I don't know. Made in China. That's not very. <clears throat> that doesn't inspire much confidence. But it is what it is. And now for the main part, this box, which comes with a couple of probes. Um, no name, probably no name, 65 megahertz times 10 probes. Right. Yeah. This is an HP 54600A half digital half CRT oscilloscope, which is surprisingly lightweight for what it is. And it smells half decent. Yeah. Set this down. Um, it doesn't look like there's any more stuff in here apart from dirt. Oh wait, never mind, I spoke too soon. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. This is a development board with an FPGA on it, which is nice. There's a display and stuff. A rotary switch which I will probably 
salvage uh, two rotary switches which I will probably salvage. There's this which looks like an ATX power supply. Let's see. 12 volt 18 amps, 3.3 volts, 14 amps, and 5 volts, 2 amps. Not bad, I kind of like this. Hmm. A bunch of 1% metal film resistors, probably, and a whole bunch of uh, inductors, transformers, air core transformers. I have no idea. This. Uh, flux which is also a very nice touch <clears throat> even more of these air core, air core inductor things uh, a couple of hand tools plenty of hand tools also very nice shouldn't be putting them on the scope like this but oh well aha uh, BNC to BNC connector or adapter should I say which is also very nice this which is full of probably latching relays see it um, solder finally but it looks like this is of the leg free type which is not very impressive but still Good to have. Uh, I, I really don't know what to do with so many of these things. And finally, there's this. An even bigger Xiaomi screwdriver kit, and it looks like it's electrical. Nice. So all in all I would like to thank uh, Alex from the rep server for sending me this stuff. I don't know what else to say. This is a lot. God that noise in the background. Annoying but oh well. Good loot and now it's time to turn the scope on. Okay moment of truth. Uh, I hear something. Hmm. Aha, there we go. I forgot how long CRT scopes take to turn on. Brightness is at max. And this thing is already super responsive. Okay. Um, roads. One, two. Right, so mm, there's that and it, it does something clearly a digital scope as you can see hmm okay so okay channel 2 off channel 1 off um, measure cursors clear cursors right clear measurement time clear measurement let's go back to channel 1 turn it on so okay so volts per division is here that's one volt per division and time scale is over here it goes down to two nanoseconds per division this is a partially sampling oscilloscope let's set it to one microsecond per division it says 1.2 kilohertz so i think i'd better set it to uh one millisecond per division there's this 
and I bet ground goes in here. Hmm. I have no idea. Where's this thing supposed to go? Oh, whatever. Okay, so trigger level. I love how responsive this thing is compared to my DS ten fifty four Z. I wish it was slightly brighter, but that's what you get for CRT scoop, I guess. Uh, let's see, what does trigger mode do? Hmm. Trigger source, slope or counting. Right, so this can switch between AC and DC coupling, rising and falling edges. Rejection, okay back to channel one bandwidth limit on or off invert on or off hmm right this is a 10x probe that makes sense or i think i did set it to 10x i don't remember hmm yeah it was set to 10x 1x would greatly decrease bandwidth which i don't want right so I will have to reset scale for volts per division. Mm, okay, I'll set it to one volt per division and move, move it so that it's perfectly centered. You can hardly see the edges on here, so maybe. Hmm. You can actually see the sampling points, which is kind of impressive. And obviously the probes themselves are not compensated properly. Uh, where do you compensate these? Here. I do not have a non-metallic screwdriver. Anyway, uh, 5 volts peak to peak. Five, um, almost there. Oh well. These encoders are really nice. Hmm. Okay, I think I'll put it here and let me go and look for a screwdriver. There's a trick with variable capacitors. If you connect the, the lead that connects to the screw to ground, it should eliminate um, the need for a non-metallic screwdriver. I should be getting some variable caps soon. Okay, so the waveform doesn't change when I touch the thing, so that's a good sign. I still need a different head. Hmm. Let's see. Ah. Overcompensated. Under. Okay, that's really touchy. That looks about right. Let me zoom into the edge. Hmm. That looks about right, I'd say. And now <clears throat> we should be able to do a simple bandwidth measurement. Right, so cursor, cursor. Uh, okay. Time. voltage right so it goes up to approximately 4.8 so i'll call 90 percent 4.5 ish and 10 percent becomes 500 millivolts uh 
Oke. Okay. Um that looks like a 1 microsecond rise time which is honestly honestly not very impressive. I wonder there's something wrong. Mm. Oh well, I guess it's these cheap probes. So, uh, bandwidth is 0 0.3, oops, 0 0.35 by rise time. 350 kilohertz doesn't sound very impressive. I, I guess it's just these probes. Hmm. Interesting. To say nothing of the signal source itself, I need a better rise time generator. I do have a couple of Pi Picos and those things have a certified rise time of approximately 1 nanosecond. So I know what I'm going to do today. But anyways, uh, thanks a lot to Alex for sending me this thing along with a bunch of others. I will put them to good use.